Yeah? Okay. So I'm Cassidy Hall, I'm the director of the Doteo Center at the University of Idaho. Um, and uh, what we do at the Doteo Center is pretty much play with technology. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm kind of in charge of a center that looks at technology integration in all educational realms. And I work with K-12 teachers as well as faculty on campus. And so we do a lot of exploring with new technologies that hit the market. And then I try to make things as feasible as possible to the K-12 realm as well in terms of if I'm going to talk about virtual reality, for instance, I'm going to present it to them in the most low cost, effective way that they can use it on their phone so that they can actually think about, oh, I could actually do this in my classroom. And I do that with faculty on campus as well because we are the University of Idaho. We don't have a lot of money. So the problem where I started this project about Google Street View and looking at putting our um, campus on the map is that if I go out to um, UI's campus on Google Street View um, and I go down in the corner and click on my little Street View guy because I want to see all those little 360 bubbles pop up, right? There aren't any. <laughs> so it's very depressing. Our campus on the map is quite frankly pathetic, okay? Um, there is hardly anything is even pinpointed. There are buildings on campus that don't even tell us what building it is. Um, and so it's just really, really disappointing. Um, there is one place on campus that does not fit into that realm, and that is our student rec center. So somebody at the student rec center actually went and did a whole tour of the student rec center in um, Google Street View. So I'm very proud of who that person was, and I can show you who they were, but I don't know who they are. Right? Because here's, here's the number one problem with Street View when um, people do it for the first time. Ooh, I want to go back this way. I want to go in the locker room. I know it'll let me. There we go. Is that sometimes when they take pictures, ooh. Yeah, this is the women's locker room, too. Oh, damn. It's, it's go. Yeah. It took me, anyways, his reflection is in the mirror, <laughs> okay? So the guy that did the tour <laughs> of the campus rec center, every time you see a mirror or a reflecting wall of some sort, you can see him there. So it's kind of funny. But, um, so this is the only place on campus that really has those. Now, the Doceo Center is the other place. I can take you to the Doceo Center and show you 360 shots of it, but that's because I'm the Doceo Center, right? Um, so what I want to do is solve this issue and say, hey, um, everybody looks at Google Maps when they're interested in going to a place, so why are we not using this free tool that we could be using in a marketable way? to um, get our campus out there. Okay, so how did I conquer the problem? Um, getting buy-in is huge on campus for anything that you wanna do. I did reach out to marketing a few years ago and said, hey, I have this idea. And they said, yeah, we'll get back to you in six months. Crickets, right? So I decided this year, well, I'm just gonna do this on my own, okay? So it is me and a um, research assistant, Yudi Zhu, who has been with me for three years in the center, who will be working on the project with me this summer. Um, we've already started it, but we have a lot of work yet to do. So I started with a workshop because I wanted to say to people on campus, look, this is about Street View, but I wanted to present it in a really professional way. So I got my friend Ron Hall, <laughs> who um, is a Google Street View trusted photographer, and he's up around um, <clears throat> uh, Cheney, Washington. And um, he came down and I said, Ron Hall's doing the workshop, right? And I just collaborated with him on the workshop. Uh, that way I knew that people were saying, oh, this isn't Cassidy doing a workshop. This is somebody from Google and that you know has been working in this stuff for a while. He's got a background and, and knows how to do all the GIS kind of stuff as well. So people had lots of enthusiasm for Ron coming. Um, and then I wanted to make it as DIY as possible, right? <laughs> Because if I can't um, get faculty and staff on the page with me and like, oh, this is something I can actually use, then I'm, I'm, I'm already uh, ending the project from the get-go. 
So making it affordable is a huge piece, um, and then presenting it in the simplest way possible so that it is not intimidating to the people that come to the workshop. Uh, the workshop was pretty um, successful. We had, uh, I don't know how many people, probably between 30 and 40 people, and um, they were from all over campus. So I had folks from uh, different buildings that were just interested, and I'd like to start using Street View to you know, get our uh, building out there, but I don't know how to do it. Okay, so, um, and then I had instructors, I had um, lots of different staff, I even had some students in, in the room. So here's the reality of using Google Street View. Um, you can take these great 360 pictures, but unless you have a place to put them, then you can't really make them a tour. Does that make sense to everybody? So we want a tour where we can walk from one image into another, and in order to do that in Street View, you have to have a pin on a map to do that, okay? So step one is marking your Google Map. So in order to do this, I worked with two of my classes of students. Um, one of them is a, um, a instructional technology class that I teach, and the other is an active learning history design class that I teach. So it worked really well with both of those audiences. And I said, what should I put on the map? <laughs> I actually logged into my account at every station. I teach in an active learning center. Woohoo! I teach in an active learning center and I logged into every station in the classroom and I said, you're going to mark the map for me, okay? And the students were really concerned at first and they were like, well, can I mark, what's that little, um, what's the little grocery store beer place on campus? Yeah, the Perch, right? And I was like, they said, can I mark that? And I said, absolutely. I want you to look at this from the viewpoint of a prospective student and say, hey, what things are they going to be interested in? What should they know exists on our campus? Um, so I showed them that all you have to do is right click on Google Maps when you go to Google Maps and you will get um, a thing that says add a missing place. Okay? And then you just fill in the information about that missing place. Google then takes a few days <laughs> to actually put that missing place on the map because they check out that it's a valid place and then it appears. Okay, so it doesn't happen instantly. Um, so when I did this with students, um, they marked everything. I kept a list of what they marked so I knew to go back and search for it. And a few days later, everything was there. Okay, but that's step one. If I really want to make this work, I, I knew that I needed to go through this first. Now, you could consider doing ads your business instead. Okay, so does anybody have a um, Google My Business account? Okay, so if you have a Google My Business account, you can put your business out there so that Ocheo Center is out there. I have control of it. I can control all the photos that are on it. However, if I tr try to do that for our entire campus, um, Google isn't going to give me all of the um, rights for all of those different businesses as one person, right? They're not going to buy that, okay? So I've tried, um, <laughs> and they're supposed to send you a little postcard so many days after you, like, add your business, um, and I never got any of the little postcards, and I was like, well, this is, you know, so basically in order to go to that step, what I'm going to have to do is go to folks that are in these different departments and say, hey, would you like to claim your business? Because then you can control this content that I added to Maps for you. So that's, that's probably what I'll do um, down the road, but we're not there yet. Um, to go into the Google Biz My Business website, you can see on here that here's my Doceo Center, and here are the other places that I tried to claim, and, but I need verification in order to do that. Okay? And all I was doing was in the College of Education, which matches my address, and they still never came to me. So I don't know. I probably need to, once the semester is over, call Google and say, what the hell? Um, <laughs> but this is what the Doceo Center looks like. So I can control anything from here. You know, you can um, get how many views there were, what kind of activities. So they give you some stats and things like that that you can work from as well. Oh, that's the wrong one. So Google Street View. That's um, what the, the workshop was primarily about. I wanted to pe show people how to utilize it. Okay, how many of you have Google Street View on your smartphone? Okay, awesome. The rest of you get out your smartphones and put Google Street View on it because we're going to play with it. Okay, this is an interactive session. 
Um, so what I did with folks that came to the workshop is I said download Google Street View, right? Because that's step one. And then I gave them one of my favorite little devices, which is called a Veer. Okay, and here's a Veer. And all Veer is, and I'll just pass these around. You can like take one and pass it on. Um, <coughs> Veer is a foldable VR set. Okay, because I wanted them to walk away from the workshop and say, hey, I can actually look at this in virtual reality when I go home. Let me just take one and pass them on. <coughs> and I want to make sure everybody gets one of those. So about beer, by the way, if you click on that link there, it'll take you out to Amazon, which is where I buy them. Um, they're uh, right now eight bucks a piece. Um, sometimes they go down to six dollars a piece, but if you buy a, ten, uh, a case of 10, then it's 60 dollars. So every time I do a workshop on Street View, I give these away because I want them to walk away again and be able to do it after they leave the room, right? Okay, the other thing I did to support this project was I bought Rico Thetas. And Rico Theta is one of the 360 cameras. Anybody ever play with a Rico Theta before? Good. Okay, so um, if you go out and I link two kits that are available there on Amazon, you can buy a, th a kit that comes with the 360 mic in case they're shooting 360 video. And you can also just buy a kit that has um, the regular 360 camera in it. So I'll pass that around if anybody wants to take a look. That's the smaller kit without the mic. Um, but the 360, uh, the camera is very easy to use. It connects to my phone and then all of my uh, uh, pictures that I take automatically go to my Google uh, Photos account. Okay, so I've got uh, Google Photos will create this folder called um, Rico Theta and then all of the pictures I take from my Rico Theta go into that folder in my um, Google uh, Photos album. And how much do the kits cost? Because I always get that question, right? Um, so the 360 kit with the microphone, it was um, 625, 626. And then the one without the microphone, just the simple kit, <coughs> uh, was about, what? 392. Um, so what I did from the Doceo Center perspective is I loan equipment a lot. So I bought four kits, two simple ones, two with the mics. I put them in the curriculum center and I said, anybody at the workshop that wants to do this, they're available. Just go check them out, right? So <laughs> that's how I try to support it a little bit further. Um, but in the meantime, I went back to their devices and said, okay, meanwhile, let's learn how you can do this on your own without a Rico Theta, right? Because I wanted to make sure that I was supporting um, that part, okay? So if you pull up your Street View app, and we did try to do the, a mirroring thing so that we could get it up here, but didn't work out too well for us today. So um, I'm just going to kind of do this on the fly. But when you're in your app, you can look up anywhere in the world that you want to go. Okay, so maybe you want to go to Paris and see Notre Dame because, you know, it, it was there in its perfect form recently. <laughs> um, and I'm sure it still will be <laughs> on, um, on Google Street View. Okay, and just look up any place. And what happens, um, is that that place uh, will, it will go to that place and then below it, you're gonna see all of these pictures that you can pull up. Okay, yes, absolutely, sorry. And then when you get a photo that you actually want to look at, you just tap on the photo. And this little um, thing pops up in the corner that looks like a mask, right? So it's like a little VR viewer. And if you tap on the VR viewer, what happens to your phone is that it will um, split the screen and pull up the picture. 
so that now you've got this split picture, right? And that's when I want to put my viewers on and be able to look at my picture. Okay, so I think I have a set in here. So that's the first step I do is I show everybody this because I want them to know, hey, this is really easy to do. You know, anybody can do this from Street View. You can look at anywhere in the world. Um, for faculty, this connects to anything that they do in their classroom, too. I'm like, when you're talking about place, consider what you could do with VR when, when you're talking about that place. Okay, so you can kind of um, look around at everything. And if anybody wants to see it on my phone, they're welcome to as well. Um, so that's kind of step one, right? You can go to any place and look at it and just showing them that piece. But the other thing you can do on Street View is if you go back to the main app, you'll see um, down in the corner where the camera is. If you tap on that orange camera down in the lower right corner, um, it will ask you if you can, it can access your video storage, so that's totally up to you. And then there are three buttons on there. It says link your external 360 camera, import 360 photos. Okay, so that's where I would import them if I want to then stitch them together on here. Um, or there's just a camera. So if you tap on camera and you really want to just get used to, hey, I want to take 360s on the fly when I'm out traveling somewhere, but I don't want to carry a Ricoh Theta with me, right? I don't want to buy a $300 camera to do that. Well, you can do it in Street View. Okay, so what happens here is it pulls up a little picture for you and it has this floating orange dot. And what you do is you stand in one place, that's very important, <laughs> and you follow the orange dots and they start to load on your screen and then more orange dots appear. And they will start to appear above and below because it's gonna give you a full 360 shot. And you just follow the dots. So essentially, when you're done following the dots and you're happy with your picture and you have the whole thing, you hit the check mark at the bottom of the screen. And then that photo, you'll see the little Street View guy run back and forth and he starts stitching all of those little pictures together for you. Wow, it's being really particular about that one picture. Now, I will warn you that if you have like lots of faces around you like you do right now, you'll probably cut some of them off and you'll have like floating heads and people with one arm and you know, stuff like that. Half bodies, that happens a lot. Um, if you're outside and you do this, it does it pretty seamlessly. So <laughs> I do this a lot when I'm somewhere and I just wanna be able to show it to somebody. And if, you, um, if you're like a social media person and you ever throw a 360 picture from Google on your social media, people go wild over that stuff. Like they've never seen one before. I don't know what that's all about, but. Um, so then all you would do is hit your check mark. Your little guy will fly back and forth across the screen. He'll stitch everything together. And then all of a sudden you have this picture and it'll say, are you ready to publish? Okay, so anybody that has a Google account and uses Google Street View can publish 360 videos to Google Maps. You don't have to be anybody special to do that. You can do it all on your own. Um, you will, however, be the um, photographer on those videos based on what count you're logged into, okay? So I am logged into my CassidyH at uidaho.edu Gmail account. And so when um, I, uh, process something and I publish a photo, it comes up as me in that way. I knew that was going to happen. It should come back up. Okay, so um, once I have that picture published then, it's out there for anybody to be able to jump on and view it. Okay, and, and so the first part of my workshop is like, look, you can do this by yourself, you can publish stuff. Like this is what Google is all about, is like bringing us all together and, and allowing us to add things to the map, right? <laughs> um, so you have that ability to get it done. Um, now also within Street View, which I show them after the fact, is if you've got all these pictures in here and then you wanna do that walking tour where you've got the arrows, um, if you go to one of your pictures that you wanna connect to something, there's um, the three vertical buttons up in the corner, like three vertical dots, upper right. 
And if you tap on that, it will give you the um, it will give you some different possibilities. Okay. So um, sometimes it's pick a maps listing. So if it's not listed anywhere, then you can list it from here. So you list that photo. So if this photo is going in the Trio program at the University of Idaho, then I can go pick a listing and put in Trio and add it because I've already dropped that point on the map, right? And that's why we did that first, because we wanted that place to exist <laughs> so that I could say these photos go there too. And then if you have multiple 360 photos in there, it will give you the option to attach those photos. And it'll say something like um, make a connection between photos. And all you do then is you say, okay, I want this photo to connect to this photo. And you have to make sure that, you know, if I'm doing these for Trio, they all need to say Trio so that they show up in the same place. And then it's just these little arrows. And I get to say, I want the arrow to shoot this way so that it walks through the doorway to the next picture. Okay? So in other words, when you're doing this, you have to plan ahead. <laughs> because if I want to get a 360 shot of a whole floor of a building, then I'm going to want to take a picture. Probably in this room, I would only need two pictures. Okay? I would probably need one from over here at this entrance so that people know that they can walk in this way from my tour. And I would need one over there from that entrance. Okay? But those two photos are going to get the whole room. So don't think that you have to take a photo every 10 feet. Totally not necessary. That's really overkill. <laughs> Okay, um, but taking a photo, I don't know, maybe 25 feet um, is a good idea. Okay, always take a photo at every entrance because if you want somebody to see, oh, here's a door to Trio, now I'm going to walk through it, here's an arrow, <laughs> right? Then they know what they're seeing in the building. Okay, so um, what I had to also consider in doing this, and I, I did um, the entire... Um, uh, college of Education building. So those photos are out there, but I'm waiting for all the pins to be dropped so that I can put them all together. Um, what I did was I wanted to um, make sure that I was thinking about everything clearly in doing this. So when I talked to, when I did the workshop, I talked to people and said, so what do you think about this project? Who wants to get involved? The nice thing was that there were people in there that said, um, you know, I'm in charge of this and this and this over at the Bruce Pittman Center, so I'd like to do that building on my own. And I said, go for it. Go, go get a kit, <laughs> right? You know how to do it now? There's a kit. And that takes another building off of my plate, and I'm like, yes, okay? <laughs> so that's a really good thing, especially when you're trying to do a whole campus. Um, the other thing is that somebody from uh, facilities came, which was really nice because she came up and talked to me afterwards and she said, have you considered that there might be some places on campus that we don't want to show people for security reasons? And I said, absolutely, right? So if we've got some research going on in a lab and we don't necessarily want people knowing what's happening in there and, and all of those things, then I probably want to stay away from that area a little bit. <laughs> Um, they're also, I mean, just being really honest, and you can probably say this about your own campuses, there's some buildings that I wouldn't want to show prospective students because they would look at them and say, oh my God, I hope I never have a class there, right? Because we've got some classrooms that are in pretty bad shape. I think every university does. So am I going to do a full tour of every building? Absolutely not. Am I going to do a full tour of the College of Ed that was just renovated three years ago? Absolutely. Okay, so there's like some decisions to be made there. Um, but I really wanted to um, consider my audience for this. So um, taking those st uh, students from my two courses, the Active Learning History Design course and the um, Technology Teaching and Learning course, those were two great audiences to work with. And what I did is I had them team up within the majors that they have. Okay, so like for instance, I had, um, a group of students who was in the College of Natural Resources, there were like three or four of them sitting together working on this. And when they went to add missing points to the map, they were like, well, a lot of stuff we do isn't on campus. And I'm like, add it. Because that's part of this project, right? The University of Idaho has an extension office in all but two counties in the state of Idaho. And I want those extension offices to appear on the map. 
right? That, that's part of this project. So those students were so helpful in saying, well, we've got this forest thing going on out here, and we've got this other facility that a lot of people don't know about out in Troy. And so they started marking all these places that I wouldn't have known about, right? So I really wanted the students as involved as possible. And then they were able to say, you know, if I were thinking of coming to this campus, I would want other students to know about this thing, right, or this place. And then they started marking those places as well. Um, with faculty and staff, I was just really interested, in, in, it's interesting seeing all the excitement. Okay, so there was somebody that came from marketing and he was new. And he was like, I'm so all over this. I'm so glad you're doing this. And I'm like, well, thank goodness, because crickets, right? Uh, <laughs> so somebody from marketing cared. Um, and so we got him uh, on board. And so now I'm starting to partner with people and say, hey, could you do this building for me? And here's the equipment you need and, and those kinds of things. And then I can take a couple of the locations off of my list, right? Um, and then the, the thing that I haven't done yet is gone to administration. Um, we're in such flux administration-wise that I think it would be a little bit of a waste of my time at this point. So I will get there eventually. And eventually I will probably just show them, hey, all this stuff's on maps. Maybe you could do something with it. You know, just put a little bug in their ear. <coughs> um, things to consider here. Is, was that I really wanted the students um, to have a voice in this project, right? We do so many things on our, on our campuses and we never consider what students think of those things. I see um, occasionally a college talking about renovating a classroom. Um, Greg and I are on a work group together called the Classroom Strategic Planning Work Group. And um, I'll have instructors that will argue that they need whiteboards at the front of an, a classroom that seats 150 people. And I say, who do you think is going to see what you write on it, right? Because, you know, I'm always looking at the student perspective. And then people will start to argue with me, but then I'm like, okay, go sit back in the 30th row. Go ahead. <laughs> see what happens. You know, like there's a reason we have other sorts of technology added to these classrooms. So um, having those arguments is really important, I think, because we need students to have a voice and they don't always have a place where they are to have that voice. So we have to always point out, what's the student perspective on this? Um, where is it okay to take photos? So does anybody know the rule about photos in public places? Yeah? <laughs> well, no. So what is it? With, with, with public places, what is the rule? Can I take a photo in a public place and publish it with people in it? It's actually, if it's a public place, it's okay. Yes, because um, it's considered a public place and people are in public places all the time. So are you on Google Street View? Almost guarantee it. You're probably somewhere on Google Street View. I have friends who have realized that, did you ever look up your house on Google Street View? And, they, and I, I have a friend who was like, yeah, I'm standing right in the window of my house. Like, he was standing inside and he can see himself on the Google Street View. Um, when Google does these professionally, they blur the faces, okay? Also, within the Street View app, when you go to publish the photo, it will ask you if you want to blur the faces. So you can do that. You can opt to blur the faces. So on campus, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, if I'm not in a classroom, and I'm like out in the commons area of a building, I'm not gonna blur faces, that's a public space. If I'm in a classroom, I'm probably gonna blur faces if there happens to be anybody in there when I go and take a picture, right? Um, I could also just take a picture when there's nobody in the classroom and totally be off the hook that way, okay? So there's a couple ways you can look at that. Um, but most places on campus are gonna be considered public places. Classrooms are actually considered public places, but because only certain people are in that class, and we know we have all those FERPA violations for classes anyway, then you would obviously wanna be a little careful about that. We don't wanna say that Mary is in you know, this class at this time on Mondays of every week. That's probably not. Um, so security issues was the other thing and you know security issues is something that as I go along and do campus the whole campus 
I'm going to hit certain areas and be like, yeah, we probably don't want to show the cadavers at the lab over at Gritman, right? Like there are certain things that we, we probably want to steer away from. So um, I guess being smart about it. The other thing you can do with this then, so after you've got all the 360 pictures, right? So this is way down the road because it takes a while to get all your footage. Um, but you can then take your pictures and drop them into Google Tour Center, okay? And, or I'm sorry, Google Tour Creator. And in the Creator, then it will let you take the pictures and have sort of like a photo show. And you can also put text in there. You can narrate. Okay, so you can add all these other pieces to it. And again, free tool, right? I'm not showing anybody anything that they've got to pay for. This isn't software that they've got to figure out how to work it. It's really easy to use. Um, an example, and so I cheated on this one. My husband came to the workshop because um, he wanted to learn how to do this. He's a real estate agent. And I was like, yeah, come to the workshop, you know? You, you've met Ron before, like he can show you how to do all this stuff. And so Ron said, for you, I would totally go to Google Tour Creator and get started there. Like, get your photos, but then go there. And so he did. Um, <laughs> this, I linked the Tour Creator Help Center. So it will show you on here, like how to, um, what kind of cameras will work in Tour Creator. Okay, so obviously Rico Theta is on there. That's the one I decided to go with, because. It's a cheaper camera in terms of price, but it's so easy to use. Like that was one that I felt, wow, I can lend this to anybody and they'll, they'll figure it out, right? Um, but it goes through kind of step by step all the things that you would need to do in order to create a tour. Um, Google Poly is what your tour then, when you're done with your tour, it gets loaded to Google Poly and it becomes a poly tour, okay? And what does that look like? So my husband's first project <laughs> is that we have a cabin to sell in Pennsylvania. I don't really want to sell it, but it's kind of sitting there all by itself. Okay, so I'm out here and I can kind of shift around and see the first photo that's in here. And you can see he didn't put any text on this one because there's nothing sort of floating around. Okay, that's just outside of the house. But then if you um, start clicking the buttons, you go inside. Okay, so. As a um, person selling this place, like I don't have to give anybody any information. I just give them the tour and say, here you go, because we're selling the house on our own. So anybody can do this, right? It, it was so easy. Um, notice the little eyes here, that if an eye pops up on the screen and I click that, that's information that Bill added in. Okay, so it's a point of interest. So it says Vermont Castings High Efficiency Wood Stove. Okay, and if I go over here, Ooh, where am I in this house? And I click here. Um, Bosch Instant Hot Water Heater. Okay, so he put in little things like that that people would be interested in if they're looking at it from a, I might buy this off the grid cabin in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania kind of thing. Okay, so, um, <laughs> but it, it's a really cool tool in that if I were to do this for a department in, on campus, then I can say, hey, what does the dean have to say about this space? You know, so I'm going to go up to the dean suite and I can do a narration of the dean talking about, you know, what's going on in the college bed. Um, if I pop down to student services, I can have somebody from student services telling students, here's how you access our information. You know, come visit us for these things and we could link the, uh, the website on there, all those types of stuff. So, so you can really kind of um, feasibly put everything together, right? So this was just a really easy way for somebody to be able to see um, our entire little tiny cabin uh, without my husband. He did this in one evening in like two hours. Okay, so all we did is when we went to Pennsylvania, we took the 360 shots on the Rico Theta, which probably took us a whopping 20 minutes. And then it took him a couple hours to put this together just because he had never used the tool before. <laughs> so he's like, how do I start this? And I was like, don't ask me, I've never used it. This is, I just know that this is where you're supposed to start, right? And, and so, um, and then when, putting in the narration and all that kind of stuff, um, or he didn't put narration in this, but putting in the words and the places and all that took him a lot, okay? So that gives you an example of, of kind of down the road what we're looking for.
There we go. So um, I think the important things to think about, right, are um, when, you, when you introduce this to people, make it doable for them, okay? Um, because I, I don't want, I'm, I'm in the situation now where this research assistant and I will do campus this summer and our um, projected goal is that we will start as soon as the semester is over and be done with this project by the end of July, which is when my grant funding runs out, okay? Right, key, right? Grant funding, gone at the end of July. Um, so I, I need to keep that in perspective and say, okay, I've got this time frame to do this in. And, and then, of course, the research assistant will get paid to work on this project throughout the summer. And um, we'll divide buildings, right? Like one day he'll go to this building and I'll go to this building and we will solo do those buildings on our own. And then we will each be in charge of stitching together the pictures in that building. Um, one thing that's very difficult, let me show this to you in photos, okay? So if I go to Google Photos, here are all of my Rico Theta photos that popped in, okay? Um, you can see on here that a lot of these are gonna look very familiar, like similar to each other, okay? So because they're shot 360, it's really hard. But very strategically in an order. Like I started on the first floor and I went in this direction and then I hit the first, second floor and I went in this direction so that you know what order the pictures are in when you go to map this all together. Otherwise, you're like, it, it's gonna take you forever, <laughs> okay? So you need to be really mindful of that uh, on the get-go. So, you know, just coming in here, I was looking earlier and I'm like, okay, I wanna go to trio pictures and I wanna see um, how to stitch together uh, certain pictures from Trio. So it took me a while to realize which ones were Trio, first of all. And let's see, they were, and now I can't even find them. Um, let's see, I knew from the bookcases over here. Okay, so I knew I needed that picture, and because I could, I could um, identify that one, I knew that this was their conference room, and this was the outside of their room. So putting those three pictures together was important, but I also needed the entrance to TRIO, right? Because I wanna say, oh, here, we can walk into the TRIO office, so here's that photo, right? So that's four pictures right there for TRIO that I'm stitching together. Okay, so in this same building, on a different pin, I've got Doceo Center, and it's got an outside of the room picture, and it's got two inside pictures, so that everybody can see everything there. The Curriculum Center, I've got a picture in the lobby, a picture by the, the desk, a picture in the book stacks. Okay, so, you know, think strategically, and what I did was I actually made a list because I knew that if I just threw them in there, because what's gonna happen is you go out and you take the pictures and you don't have time to stitch them together right then. And then you're like, oh, well they're out there, but I have no idea what they're from, right? Like, I, you know. So what you could do, um, which I did not do, but I very easily could have, is in um, photos, I could have taken and separated these into albums, right? I could have said, these four pictures are for trio, and I could have shot them to an album named Trio. Okay, so if you think about that ahead of time, um, the other reason that I'm using Google Photos for this, obviously, is because I have you know, free space on there to, to put them in. And I don't have to do anything special to make that happen on my phone. Um, it's a Google Pixel phone. That Theta, Rico Theta just sent them right to their own folder, so I didn't have to deal with it. I'm sure it would do that on an iPhone as well, but does anybody get really frustrated with their photos on iPhone? That's why I don't have one anymore. Um, when I did have one, I used Google Photos and I got rid of their little iPhoto thing because it, it's frustrating, it's not a real cloud, right? Like I delete a, a photo off of my camera and it deletes it from the cloud, what the hell is that? That, that doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> it's not a cloud. 
Uh, so, so I just stopped using it and I went to Google Photos and, and now I kind of, everything lives in Google Photos, okay? So that's another thing to keep in consideration is if you're going to do a larger place, like you're, you're thinking right now, I want to do this whole building that I work in. If you're going to do that undertaking, make sure you kind of map it out ahead of time and you know the, this is the order I'm going to take the photos in. Look at the classrooms and see how busy they are at certain times of day because I ran into that issue too. Like we got up to the third floor or the second floor and I was like, oh, um, this is going to be bad, right? Because like, there, there were students everywhere. And so I actually said to Ron, let's just wait for 10 minutes. Right? And then we waited until everything cleared out, people got back into rooms, and then we went ahead and, and did it again. So, um, you know, looking at timing. So doing this as a summer project is great for me because there won't be a lot of students around. I won't have to deal with traffic. I won't have to deal with which classrooms can I not go into right now because you don't really want to go bother faculty if you don't have to and especially get those looks of like, what is she doing in this room with that thing? So <laughs> I, I try not to, um, you know, irritate if I don't need to. And um, that is my information. So uh, if anybody has questions about this or wants to see final products or where I am at this point or uh, wants to sit with me and have me walk them through, this is how you do it in the app. So what I was hoping to do is bring the app on my, on my phone and be able to say, here's how you stitch this picture to this picture, right? But without um, having my phone projected, it's a little bit hard to pull off in a, in a good way. So I figured we would um, just kind of go over that. So um, questions? Yes. Hi. Uh, So right now it's just on Google Maps. So um, basically you publish your Street View pictures and they go to Google Maps. Um, and a lot, most people when they go to Google Maps know to look for Street View pictures. They'll, they'll hit the little Street View guy, right? Because you want to see like, I want to walk into this building. Do you do that with restaurants? Does anybody do that with restaurants? I do it all the time. I want to see what it looks like inside before I go there, right? Um, so uh, right now, that's how we have it set up. What we intend to do eventually is on the websites for the university, like uh, College of Education website, if um, you go to the page about the Dean Suite, you would be able to link out to that portion of that tour. Does that make sense? So we would link the tours. Because the tours themselves, I can't put a whole tour on Google Maps, right? I can only put my individual photos on there, but then I can do something else to stitch them together. Now what I can do is if somebody claims a business, which will be on my list, so say I've, I've claimed the Doceo Center, I can put a poly tour that I've created, a hyperlink of it from the Doceo Center's business page, and they can link to it from there. So essentially, everything would be able to go from Google Maps, but that's only if the other people on campus do their part and say, I'm going to claim my business and I'm going to actually take care of it, <laughs> right? Um, and then the, the thing I want to do there is empower them to be able to then add their own content, right? Like, I'm sure, I'm only taking 360 shots. There's other stuff that you're going to want to show. Right? There's other stuff that you're going to want to um, include within your business listing. Yeah? Yes. Um, you can get them added, but that again was a security issue. So if I go to facilities and ask them for floor plans and I tell them what I'm using them for, um, I guarantee you that there's going to be like a big security thing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not using floor plans. Um, basically when you go to a building, you can go from place to place, but you're going from the bubbles. So if I click on a bubble um, in one area, it might shoot me to a different level than in another area. It would be ultimate to be able to use the floor plan and say this is the first floor, this is the second floor. Um, but, but right now, just because of, uh, 
I know some people would be hypersensitive about that issue. I'm, I'm just kind of going around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of them, yeah. Uh -huh. The College of Ed isn't, though, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's of course the one I started with. So I was, yeah. So um, the the floor plans to buildings, I don't know how Google gets those, but you can add your own floor plan to a building. And if you look up um, how to add floor plan to Google Street View, it will walk you through that process. Okay, so that's totally possible. Anything else? Okay, well, go take some 360 pictures in Vegas. Because not everything stays in Vegas, right? <laughs> okay, um, and enjoy the little um, foldables. Those are for you to take with you. Um, and hopefully, you will actually go out and, and utilize it, if you haven't already, because some of you have probably used Street View already. But um, I love the idea of just being, I carry one of these in my bag, the little foldables, and then if I want to show somebody something, I pop it up on Street View and, and put the little things on my phone and say, here, look. <laughs> and people get so jazzed about that, right? Like, oh my god, right? Um, if you ever do it with students in your classroom or faculty in a workshop, have them watch each other because you have to have a babysitter for everybody that has never used a viewer before, right? Because they'll start walking around and like smacking into things or they'll swirl, yeah, and they get sick, they get disoriented and I'm like, um, yeah, so y you just want to be a little bit careful about those kinds of things, but it should be good. Thanks for coming.